We need more of these. job in the the two bits that we said and yeah, it shifted was getting, later so it's just getting caught traffic. Yeah, it was just all traffic so So I'm Daniel Bishop, Accelerate Motorsport. Uh, so I have a bit of a split role. Uh, I manage the team from a workshop perspective and then on race weekends uh, Marvin is the, the main team manager and I sort of spend a lot of time working with him and uh, also Sandra using their experience of the, the BTCC uh, and then on the weekends I'm data engineer on Senna Proctor's car. <laughs> to be honest with you, you, you're juggling budget, you're juggling decisions on performance, you're, you're juggling decisions that affect everyone in the team as well as the car. So. You, you make lots of them. As an engineer, you'd make them with tyre decisions and, and items like that. But as, as a manager, ev everything's difficult because everything is on is on your word. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing with motorsport. The lows are low and the highs are high. So it's it's a real mix of emotions. It's the it's knowing and that feeling of wins and and the points. You know, our first points last year was a great feeling, and that kept us going all year. And you have other items where you know we get our first podiums this year and that's, that you, you live for those moments. Last year, we knew we were coming in with um, older cars and new drivers, so it was always gonna be difficult, but we showed as a team operationally what we can do. Um, you know, the drivers did a good job. They both got points last year, uh, but this year with a new car, with proven drivers, obviously the next thing's the win. I'm Andy Wilmot, team manager for Trade Price Cars Racing. Well, 2018, I was in discussion with um, Dan Kirby, team owner. I was working with Dan anyway, and he said, should we do something together? Uh, I said, yep, what are we gonna do? And we agreed that we'll do touring cars. So I became team principal. I set most, most of um, Trade Price Cars racing up um, with Dan, but that, that was my role. He was owner, I was principal, um, and I took the team manager role. So it was a lot of reading. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I quite enjoy the team manager role. It's, there's, it's actually more hands-on than being team principal. So, I mean, the cars are great. Um, we've, we've updated them since the last round, hoping that they're gonna be better. Um, everyone seems to have taken a massive jump up um, this year from last year. A lot of development's gone on. I'd like to see the Audis move forward up the grid now. We've done, done a bit more development work on them. Um, to continue scoring points, and hopefully get a podium this season. Uh, we had a few podiums last year, and obviously we'd like them again. We'd definitely like them again this year. Just keep everyone happy, keep the morale high. Um, obviously, as soon as the morale drops, that's when uh, things can go wrong, so we don't want to be there. Yeah, that's checkered flag, so they'll be clearing any minute. Five minutes till pit lane opens, five. Uh, just bear in mind it's a tight pit lane here um, and you're going to have a few n more neighbours when the cars come back so just keep an eye out for each other please. I'm Ollie Collins and I'm team manager for Motorbase Performance. So 
Um, on a race weekend, I pretty much uh, I'm in charge of pretty much everything from the engineering to the drivers, the mechanics, the truckies, making sure that everyone's in the right place at the right time. And then on race day, I look after the judicial side of things, the, the technical legality, um, anything like that, any issues that are thrown up. The harness decision is nearly always driver related. Um, race drivers are very uh, driven uh, individuals that they, they're so demanding for everything, which is what makes them successful. Our car crew will concentrate on one car. I have to look after three. Then I have to look after the well-being of all three and I have to make sure the three cars are very equal, um, regardless of their position on track. It's a new car. Uh, it's been fantastic right from the off, but we're still learning it. And uh, we've, we've had a few moments this year where we've kind of gone, ah, okay, that's, uh, that's, that was a bit of a surprise, but mostly the car has been outstanding. And that's due to the hard work that went on behind the scenes in the winter. <laughs> we, all, we all love winning, uh, but it's, it's really hard. This championship is bloody hard to win in. And we've all, everyone in this pit lane has seen the difficult times where you struggle to get cars that are competitive or drivers or as a, as a, as a whole group or you get un, unlucky or bad damage or anything like that. We've all been through the highs and lows. Uh, you know how good the highs are so you can get through the lows. Um, it's, uh, that's just part of it. That's why we do it. Good getaway by Ingram, good start by Turkington and by Saturn. And there is Turkington a long way back. Now has he got a problem? He's dropping down that magic 15 for points. Look, he's just got no pace anymore. He's got no straight line speed. Sutton through, Sutton's past Butcher. This makes it look easy, doesn't it? Looks like Baudley's been off. Or has a problem, or both. He gets a tag from behind. Whoops, Andy Needs into the back of him. What's well, that about? Was, that was very clumsy. Really bad luck for Adam Morgan, and there he is into the pit lane. That is Bobby Thompson out of the race. Look at Camish, he's closing, closing. Who's got the best drive out of the chicane? The Toyota will cover off the inside line. Ingram leads, Camish chases, it's two out of two for Tom Ingram. He picks up the winner's trophy and holds it high. Well, we made some big changes, which actually did start to bring it alive, so we struggle a lot, we always struggle with understeer. But the changes we've made allow the car to move around a little bit more, which in the high speed corners was actually okay. What do we get, two thirds of the way through the race and then the gearbox just exploded. You know, I think it was the diff exploded first and that took the gearbox with it. So it was a DNF, it wasn't, it was just uh, a failure. Nothing, uh, nothing really more complicated than that. With having a DNF in race two and now not enough time to change the gearbox for race three, that just means I'm going to be sat on the sidelines uh, drinking a Coke Zero instead of driving around fast. Just like to drive around for once. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Uh, at the minute, I'm hacked off, obviously, because the cars are about to go out for race three and I'm talking to you. We struggled with a few little bits and bobs and uh, tried, to, tried, to, uh, tried to make them better, and every time we did, um, so did everyone else, kind of. So we just, we were on the back foot from where I'd go and it was just, um, it just made for a trying weekend. Don't get me wrong, we still got um, three point scoring finishes and we're still in the top 10 in the championship. So I wouldn't change anything about this weekend. I think you've kind of got to go with it and you've got to back yourself. I think we, um, we, we certainly tried everything that we wanted to try with the car. We certainly uh, aggravated it a little bit and poked it with a stick and I think we've, um, We've got a better understanding of the car on the high speed stuff again now, um, and I think we, we go to Silverstone strong. Race three was uh, yeah a very hard race, maybe the toughest of the whole year. Um, you know you, you've got a really uh, tough racer in Ash Sutton, and he doesn't give an inch. He actually passed me in race one um, at the first complex, and I knew what he had up his sleeve, so I just made the car as wide as possible in that zone and. Uh, I made a decision early on that he wasn't getting past and, and we held on. 
I think this weekend, to sum up, has been a very solid weekend. Um, you know, we definitely went out in FP1 and realised quite quickly that we weren't really on top of the hard tyre and also this track. It's the first time we've been here with the Ford Focus ST to come away with P6, P5 and also a trophy, a podium. Um, it's maybe better than a victory in some ways because it's so high speed, it's so um, on the edge and you need to have that confidence in your car and yeah we're just chasing that all weekend.